Hello, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us. Give people a few minutes to join and get connected to audio. Actually see a few familiar names and faces. Welcome everyone. Just give one more minute here for people to get connected to audio and then I'll get going. Great. Okay, looks like most people are here. So I'm gonna get started. Uh, welcome to Zoom into MS CAP. My name's Katherine Maddy. I'm the program director for the CAP program. Um, I'm also joined by uh, Devin uh, Drummer from Harris Admissions. She's the director of uh, student recruitment and operations, as well as uh, Alyssa Chanel, who is the assistant director for MS CAP. Um, so our program tonight is gonna be split into three. I'm going to do um, a brief overview of the program and curriculum. And then we're going to spend the majority of time letting you hear from CAP students themselves, both first and second years. Um, that'll be a moderated panel uh, by Devin, and you'll have a chance at that point to go ahead and submit any questions you have for students um, to Harris Admissions in the chat. Um, so please feel free to do that. This is your chance to hear from students. Um, and then we'll close. Um, Devin will just give a few um, brief kind of next steps and overview on the admissions process. So with that, I will go ahead and get started. Okay, so um, I mentioned uh, MSCAP at the beginning. That stands for Master of Science in Computational Analysis and Public Policy, which is a very long degree name and can be confusing to some people. Um, so I'm gonna go into detail on curriculum and what exactly that means. Uh, but before I do that, I like to just take a minute to talk about why people come to this program. Um, so in this quote that I really love, um, this is from Nicole Wong, who was the former deputy CTO of the US a few years ago. And she said, we're in the midst of a moment and movement of tech savvy people coming into public service. And so I think this is even more true today. Um, we see governments and nonprofits and mission driven organizations really looking to computer scientists and data scientists to help them solve problems in their organizations and achieve their goals um, and better serve their constituents. Um, so people come to CAP to learn how to be more policy savvy and tech savvy and go out into the world and make the world a better place with those skills. So how do we, how do we teach you how to do this? Um, so there are really four key components to our foundational core curriculum. Uh, the first is computer science. Um, so we teach you how to code, we teach you how to program. The three languages um, in our core are Python, R, and Stata. Um, we also focus on databases and data manipulation and giving you a strong foundation in that. Um, statistics is another key component. Um, thinking through how are variables related to each other? How can I determine if I one variable moves, will it cause another variable to move that I'm interested in? And eventually thinking through how do I evaluate programs or projects and really understand the impact that I'm having um, on the people and um, processes that I'm trying to, to change. Uh, data science is the third piece. So thinking through um, and learning about different uh, machine learning techniques, um, how to predict variables through predictive analytics, um, and really a lot of those just modern techniques that are going to help you be smarter in organizations. Um, and then finally, um, economics. Um, so thinking through what are people's incentives um, as they make choices? Um, how do you model that? Um, what kinds of policy interventions um, can you have and what market impact um, will that and how do you measure it and how do you um, figure out what the right thing to do is. Uh, so just before moving on, two kind of key questions that I almost always get about the core curriculum. Um, one is, 
do I need a computer science background or a technical background to come to CAP? And the answer to that is no. If you have no idea what I was just talking about, um, that is okay. Um, we kind of are, have a lot of different mechanisms and levels of things. Um, and really our goal is um, to train you in these things kind of from the beginning. Um, and then on the flip side, the other question that I get a lot is, what if I do have a background or a strong background in one of these areas or more, can I still come to the program and will I still find it valuable? Um, and the answer to that is we have systems for that too. There are waiver processes, sometimes through petitions, sometimes through exams. Um, we don't want you in classes that you've already covered, maybe in undergrad. Um, so uh, we have processes for that as well. So a bit more detail about the curriculum. Um, so I'm not gonna go through each of these courses um, in your first year in detail, um, but just a couple things I wanna point out. One, uh, UChicago is on the quarter system. Um, so three classes per quarter, autumn, winter, and spring. Um, you'll also notice that um, your first year is entirely uh, required classes. Um, so for most students, if you don't wave out of anything, um, your first year is all required classes. We again, the, the key word is foundation. We want you to come out of your first year with a very strong technical and policy foundation. Um, and the reason that we organized it like this is that many CAP students want to go into a technical internship and start to practice some of these things in between their first and second year. Um, and so we felt we really wanted to put everything in the first year so that you could have an opportunity to go kind of flex those skills um, in practice and have something to speak to in between your first and second year through an internship with which almost all CAP students do. Um, and then in your second year, um, there's a whole lot more flexibility. Um, so there are a few required classes um, in your second year as well. Um, but it's mostly electives. Um, and so we really encourage students to uh, take the opportunity and the flexibility that this has to think about what do you want to do after CAP and how can you use those electives to help build the skills and subject matter expertise to get you there. Um, so, you know, Alyssa and I are doing a lot of um, over the last few weeks academic advising and just helping students think through these questions and, you know, the whole University of Chicago is really open to you as you Chicago grad students and it's amazing to see the courses that students find and different departments and kind of how they connect it all together and really create their own curriculum in their second year. Um, faculty, I want to just spend a minute on faculty. So I didn't say this, but I'm actually a graduate of the Harris School myself many years ago. And one of my favorite um, parts of, you know, really the whole experience was just the opportunity to sit in class and learn from experts in their fields, um, both people who are doing kind of groundbreaking research that is in the news, um, to practitioners who have spent many years in the job that you might want when you're out of the program and that you can learn from and have an opportunity um, to build skills and grow um, with true experts in their field. Um, I've also listed a, um, a whole bunch of um, expert areas that um, faculty have at Harris. So I think kind of really whatever your policy area and passion is, um, there's going to be a faculty member who um, kind of shares that passion and, and expertise. Uh, so professional and academic support. So sometimes that can sound like a little bit overwhelming, um, but we do want you to know there's a whole team of people here to support. Um, so first, um, Harris offers a career development office. Um, so they're really focused on things like helping you make sure you have the best resume, the best cover letter. Um, they have a whole team of people that are out there building relationships with employers um, that students are interested in so that, you know, when you go to apply at that place, they know what the program is. Um, they already have a relationship with the school to help kind of bump your resume to the top. Um, I mentioned academic advising. So Alyssa and I serve as academic advisors um, for all CAP students. And we're really here to be kind of your first point of contact. Um, anything that kind of comes up, we can help you, you know, get the resources that you need to be successful and get what you want out of the program. Um, professionally, UChicago also has over 100 research centers. Many CAP students um, do RA ships at research centers around campus during their second year. Um, and so just an opportunity again to um, not only gain skills in classes, but put them into practice um, and work with experts. 
Um, there's a growing leadership development program um, where you can gain more professional skills um, and things that are going to help differentiate you as a leader um, during your job search. And we're also growing our experiential learning opportunities. Um, so we're doing things, there's a class um, this quarter called Hacking for Defense. It's a partnership with the um, Department of Defense. Um, we're rolling out a pilot technology clinic um, that students have an opportunity to kind of work on small teams on projects. And then Harris has um, a really robust um, policy labs opportunity as well, um, where they work with, you know, five to six different partners, I think a year, figuring out kind of how to help their nonprofit and government clients solve a problem. Okay, and last but not least, career outcomes. Um, so we've compiled data um, from all of the alums that we could um, from the start of the program through the graduating class of 2019. Um, and this is kind of what it looks like. Um, so we've got 56% uh, of graduates in the private sector, uh, which is a little bit misleading actually, because many of those private sector roles are actually um, roles that are in kind of the public space. Um, so things like Civis Analytics, we have a number of alums there. It's a private company, um, but they almost exclusively do kind of political consulting and campaigns. Um, we also have people at kind of big companies like um, Accenture and Deloitte, but they really are focused on kind of public sector clients. Um, the next biggest um, sector is the nonprofit sector. We've got 29% um, percent of graduates there at places like QuestBridge, um, just really great um, nonprofits that are doing good work and helping um, in all sorts of different ways. Um, and then finally, the public sector, we've got about 15% of our graduates there. Um, primarily, um, our graduates are at the city level, so at places like the lab at DC or the New York City Mayor's Office of Analytics. Um, and they're helping those teams think through how do we better use data um, to make our city operations um, smarter and more efficient. So that is all I have um, for the overview. Um, at this point, I will turn it over to uh, Devin to help us through the student panel. I'll stop sharing. Great, thanks so much, Katie. That was um, a really helpful overview of the MSCAP program. And again, just to remind everyone, if you have questions that come up during the presentation, you can direct them to the Harris Admissions in the chat. You should have the ability to chat me there. And those could be questions about the MSCAP program in general for Katie and Alyssa to help answer, or it could be questions for our student panelists to answer. I have some set questions, don't worry. We're not depending just on you. I did some pre-work. Um, so I have some questions that I, sh I did share ahead of time. This isn't one of the debates. I did share them ahead of time. So we'll jump into those and then any questions you have, we'll try to get to those as well. But just to start, you know, let's have each of our student panelists introduce themselves, what they were doing before Harris, so both your undergraduate degree and, you know, any work you were doing before you came to Harris, and then um, perhaps your hometown. Um, so Liz, let's get started with you. Sure. So my name is Liz Nelson. I am a second year. My undergraduate was in degrees were in economics and international affairs. Um, my hometown's Ithaca, New York. And before MSCAP, I was a consultant with the federal government, and I also did some somewhat extracurricular research on Russian foreign media and propaganda. Great. Thanks, Liz. Andres. Hello. Hi, uh, my name is Andres. Uh, I study mechanical engineering before uh, the CAP program in Texas, and then after that, I, I worked in a startup for kind of six to eight months and then worked in healthcare consulting here in Chicago for two years before starting the CAP program. And I'm originally from Maracaibo, Venezuela. Okay. Um, Piyush? Hi everyone, um, I'm Piyush Tank. Um, my, uh, my previous degrees before coming to Harris was in economics and in commerce. Um, I have worked uh, in a um, um, research place called Jamin Poverty Action Lab in a short form of JPAL South Asia in India for around three to four years before coming coming to Harris. Um, I'm um, I'm from Bangalore, India. Uh, my hometown is in the west part of India, but I think for the last couple of years I was in Bangalore. Yeah, that's all about me. Great, thanks. And finally, Jacob. 
Hi everybody, hopefully you all can hear me. Uh, my name is Jacob Lepic. I'm a second year in the CAP program. I'm from Michigan, uh, so not too far away. I studied in undergrad, also international development and economics, so pretty similar. Uh, and after graduating, I worked with the state of Michigan with the Michigan Community Service Commission. So I was a, essentially a consultant with a lot of the nonprofits working to understand the impact of national service programs, as well as uh, the data that the state use to analyze volunteerism. Great, thank you. Um, so first set of questions are going to focus on academics. So when Katie was um, talking to us about the MSCAP program, she started by talking about the core. And we know that at the University of Chicago in general, the core is very important as it is at Harris. So Piyush, I'm going to start with you. Could you talk about your experiences in the core so far? Yeah, so I think um, I'm in the second year, so I spent my first year just finishing all the core courses there. And I think, um, yeah, the first thing is like, yeah, it was a lot of things, but <laughs> I think that's the best part about this um, uh, degree so far. I can feel like it's a, the, the core makes the foundation so clear. Like, I think like, and the amount of things I've learned in, in the first year itself is like, an, it's by far than what I could imagine, which I could cover in a year. So the course has been like really diverse, like in um, each quarter, uh, my courses were, I think, all of our courses were between Harris School um, and also at the CS department. So it was a really good balance. Like in, at, at, in some quarter, I was like in, working in Python and also working in R at the same time. And like, so I think it was a, a mouthful of the courses there. Um, um, my experience has been that, like, yeah, like in, uh, with that, the foundation, which I feel now I have after the first year, A, it allows me to take like a, different courses across the campus. And B, now I really feel uh, strongly rooted with, let's say, some of the, uh, the all four pillars, which Katie mentioned in the beginning that like in all the, I do feel that now I have those foundations really clear up there. So out of the core, I really have a, all things to say about it's like quite positive, quite, yeah, it's super rigorous. It takes a lot of, uh, it's investment of time is humongous, but super rewarding. Yeah. Great, thank you. How about you, Liz? Yeah, I would echo everything Piyush said. I think something that I find really amusing now in my second year is that a lot of the classes in the core where I was like, uh, I'm less excited for that one, ended up being some of my favorites, which is very counterintuitive for me. So for example, like I would coming in with an econ major, I was like, oh, do I really want to do more econ? Like I've kind of done that. Um, and I took the advanced econ sequence, or first class, and actually loved the professor that taught that because it was just a different way of thinking. Like he, like it was really different from my undergraduate experience. So I loved that class. And like similarly, I had like considered trying to wave out of analytical politics, ended up saying like, no, I'll do it. And I really enjoy it now. Like it's a really good counterpoint to the other classes I'm taking. Um, it's like I've enjoyed them all, but it's also kind of funny to me that some of the ones I've been really excited about have been classes that I didn't necessarily originally want to take and then ended up really enjoying. Um, that's kind of the beauty of the core, right? It sometimes it, it pushes you in a direction you, you wouldn't have pushed yourself otherwise. Um, Andres, what has been your favorite, favorite class so far? Oof. Uh, I think it's favorite class by far, I think has been the CS 121 with Ann Rogers. She's like, <laughs> she's like the founder of the program and she's just funny, like just in the way that she teaches and like she makes it really engaging and cares a lot that you learn and the kind of you're grasping the concepts beyond like just like the, just getting the grade and she just like emphasizes like skills, not grades. And I think that's like a really like way to cement like a culture of like hey we're here to get skills like you get whichever grade you get but like try to learn as much as you can and like i really appreciate that great um how about you jacob favorite class so far yeah mine was actually i think the second cs course in the sequence so during the winter quarter um it's taught by lamont samuels who is uh, a great professor, um, really delightful guy. And it was a chance to actually build on a lot of that just Python, like thinking about the logic and decomposition of how you solve problems and extending it into an actual project that you get to do throughout the quarter. Uh, and then he just teaches a ton of really small things that make you a lot more effective as a programmer. So it was a time where I saw like everything that I wanted 
everything that I was learning actually come to fruition and build something that I could use and look at uh, that was, you know, I really needed. <laughs> That's great. Um, so this next set of questions is going to be about practical experience. So um, Liz, I think I saw you post an update about your internship from this summer on LinkedIn not so long ago um, and quite timely. Could you give us an update about what you did for your internship this summer? Yes, definitely. And thank you for the opportunity to do a plug. Um, so my internship this summer, and I'm actually still working with them now, was with Ballot Ready. Um, so it's a nonpartisan startup devoted to making sure people are able to vote informed all the way down ballot. So if you go to the website, you can put in your address and it will tell you what's going to be on your ballot. So elected positions, but also things like ballot measures so that when you actually go into the voting booth or get your mail-in ballot, you know what you're voting on. Um, which as a person who had in the past like panicked upon seeing how many judges I had to vote on was like something I had used as a, like a user before I worked with them. Um, and so I was working with them as a data fellow, still am doing like everything from, I need to open a file that's too big to open Excel, what do I do? To, hey, our researchers need to be able to input things in the database for all the things you're gonna see on the user interface. Um, can you build like an add-on to our application that lets them do that with like things that they can enter in and like looks like a web application. Um, and so that was really great because I've been able to sort of traverse the full spectrum of things that I've learned to help them out from building out on staff applications to machine learning to just like helping translate between the tech team and the team that does all of the research. Um, and so it's been a, as you said, like a very timely place yeah. to work, um, especially as we're getting closer and closer. Um, but it also was just a lot of fun to work with them. And I believe actually the founders are also Harris alums. Yeah. So bonus there as well. Great, thank you. I used Ballot Ready to do my mail-in ballot last week, so thank you. Um, Piyush, I heard that you had a pretty exciting internship this summer. Um, do you want to tell us what you did there? Sure, sure. Um, so I work with the World Bank's unit called DIME, which is uh, basically doing an impact evolution um, on uh, using all the methods which could be possible to like um, answer the questions which they have in mind. Um, so uh, my project and my team was um, so uh, it was uh, two two professors who are full time working at the at the World Bank, and the project was around they're trying to evaluate the World Bank's uh, loan portfolio, um, and they wanted to see the impact of that loan at a really small county level of some countries, um, using the nighttime live data. So because uh, so many times said though it's very difficult to get the data at a really small level uh, of geographical unit of uh, many countries. So my job was mainly to figure out uh, how to use the nighttime light data and to use uh, that data set there to figure out, can we say because of the World Bank loan, the growth of, this, uh, of the places which, which, which got the loan is slightly higher than the someone, some, some places which didn't get the loan there. Um, the good part about the entire thing was that like in, what I learned in my, one of my uh, coursework in programming evaluation there was directly applicable to like and things I, I was doing in the summer. So I think I just like in, in the, in the uh, spring quarter, I learned about all those things like in how about different different and different methods there. And just in a month time, I was literally implementing this on my project with the, with the people at World Bank there. So yeah, that was my work. Great, thank you. Um, and just to pause here, because I see it, saw a relevant question come in, and that was like, does Harris help you find your internships? So maybe I'll pause for Liz and Piyush to answer, like, how did you go about finding your internship for, for last summer? And what a weird summer to find an internship in, too. I mean, probably some external challenges that um, were unprecedented. Yeah, I can go first. So I actually found my internship through a second year student who had interned at Ballot Ready the previous summer. They posted it on the, we have a big Slack channel for CAP, so they posted it on the internships channel. Um, and I, he was also my stat TA. So I reached out to him and I was like, hey, like, can we chat about this? I'm interested. Um, and then I interviewed with Ballot Ready after that. So to me, like the CAP community actually was the way I got my internship. Power yeah. the network. Yeah. And I think almost uh, same for me as well. I think I use uh, Harris Link. So Harris Link is also a website where like and they put 
tons of opportunities available there. Of course, I think thanks to COVID, I think I was like almost certain that nothing was going to work out at uh, this crazy time there. So, but yeah, um, Harris Link was still putting out uh, lots of uh, opportunities in the website there, and I applied through Harris Link and then got interview from there. Great, thank you. Um, Jacob, what did you do for your internship this summer? And I think you might still be there, right? Yeah, yep. So I started in January uh, and they haven't been able to get rid of me yet. <laughs> um, we actually, because of COVID, we actually shifted what I was going to be working on. And they started developing a fine food application that enabled pantries to uh, actually connect with the clients and beneficiaries of who was picking up food. So throughout the internship and now currently, we have been developing and launching an app with the partnership of a web development firm and uh, the Greater Chicago Food Depository uh, and national partners as well. Um, so I was put in charge of developing a data pipeline. So how do we get all the old data from multiple systems and databases into this new applications database? Uh, I was developing uh, data quality assessments, understanding what data was actually in there, uh, building out uh, integration so when we're uploading that whole process from getting it in um, and it was a lot of I think coordination more so there was absolutely data cleaning there was some web scraping that I built um, it, yeah a lot of data cleaning um, but it was a lot of coordination between the development firm and the actual food pantry so understanding what does this data mean of cataloging it documenting it and writing up just sort of a, a project management level schedules and such for when this data actually gets load, loaded up and what is the most efficient progress for that. Um, and just to finish up, I did actually get the internship through uh, Harris Career Development Office. Um, the Adam there uh, connected me with a bunch of people in the nonprofit sector. Uh, and after conversations with some of them, they connected me with the Thera Family Foundation. Uh, so it was a really excellent chance um, to do exactly what I wanted to do, working in the nonprofit sector for technology. Great. Shifting gears a bit, so Andres, I know you write um, for Chicago Policy Review. Can you talk a bit about your experience with that? Sure, yeah. I, my first take into the policy review was this summer when I was just joining. They sent out like kind of uh, an application to write like a initial post for the policy review and then you will be reviewing it with other people and then they tell you if you got in or not. And then so I applied during the summer and I wrote an article about Section 230, which I think they're now overhauling, um, as I saw in the latest news. But yeah, after that, then I got to meet kind of all the people from the policy review and basically it consists of you kind of join a policy area. So I joined the tech um, area and then you write an article that either is from a research publication that's within the uh, past 12 months or if it's like a topic uh, or an issue that's like re more recent and you write about it from a policy perspective. So I think it's really cool. Like I got to do one recently on facial recognition and whether it's infringing on freedom of speech. And I think it was really cool because it's just a way of like writing but also learning at the same time things that you care about. Um, and like you learn a bunch more stuff and it just becomes like I think it helps you form like what you're interested in because as you learn more you kind of like figure out like uh where you topics that you gravitate towards great thank you um so we have a question that came into the chat of you know do MSCAP students apply for RA positions on campus and I know that that absolutely does happen do any of the four of you have you done that yet no. Katie or Alyssa, do you want to just um, briefly talk, you know, give an example of a type of an RA role an MS CAP student may have had um, either now or in the past? Sure, I can jump in. So I think there are kind of two different types of RA ships that we see students do around the university. One of those would be working as an RA directly with a faculty member at the university on research that they are completing. So particularly lots of faculty at the Harris School, we've seen hire um, our students as RAs, especially in the second year, sometimes even partway through the first to work on individual research um, in the Department of Computer Science. Professors at the law school and Booth have also hired students, which is great. 
And the other kind of bucket that this falls into would be one of those many, many over 100 research centers and labs around campus that um, Katie mentioned earlier. So a great example of this, um, another second year student messaged me earlier this week to let me know she just accepted an offer to work part time as an RA with two of the U Chicago urban labs. Um, I think the education and the crime lab collectively um, have hired her to work on a project there. So the urban labs tend to really hire quite a few CAP students. They're right at that intersection. And since they're housed within the Harris School of Public Policy, they're doing work that's really relevant and appropriate for CAP students. Um, there are the behavioral insights and parenting lab at the university is also for um, students that are interested in child and family and education policy, a great place that we've seen students work at before. There's an endless list of these kinds of opportunities. Great, thanks Alyssa. Um, so I know one of my favorite things to hear about is like CAP lunch, CAPI hour, virtual JCL. You guys have such an amazing community. I'm constantly getting like really fun snapshots from Alyssa and Katie about like great things that are happening on the CAP Slack, which should have its own like CAP pun nickname. Um, Liz, talk, talk a little bit about what the CAP community has meant for you since you've come to Harris. I am really fond of the CAP community. Um, it was something I did not really know about when I joined the program. Um, and it's been like one of the most important aspects of my experience. So even while we're digital, it's been like I got my internship through CAP. I post pictures of my dog who actually just managed to open my door and walk in somehow. Um, I post pictures of him in Pets of CAP. Um, I actually posted pictures of snakes I saw when I was at my parents' house and started a multi-week discussion with an alum who's really into snakes. So like that's the kind of like strange but wonderful thing I think that epitomizes a lot of the CAP community. Like it's now I have study groups with a bunch of people um, and so like it's really kept me um, engaged with the community and it's also just like helped me do better in my schoolwork because I have study groups that I can organize um, and also been really fun just to you know talk about snakes with someone who graduated two years ago. Great. How about you Piyush? Could you talk a bit about your experiences in the CAP community? Yeah, I think I can um, same as Liz, like it's like an it's something which I was not expecting or like an, I didn't know much about the um, about the community aspect, but I think it's a really strong. It's a not a very old community there because we only I think we got the fifth badge there, but still it's a really close knit community. It's the the entire Slack group is amazing. There are a bunch of families there. Um, my favorite thing is the cap uh, cap lunch hours there, which I think now I'm I'm really missing it a lot. You should love it. The of course the speakers, but the lunch was really great there. So. <laughs> I really miss that lunch uh, every Tuesday in the Harris sometime there. But yeah, um, the overall, like, an, I'm really positively uh, surprised by the how warm the community is there. Uh, I have been to some of the seniors like in, in the CAP like, who, who have passed three, two or three years back, and they all have been very happy and very quickly uh, happy to help me, happy to have a chat with me, have a call with me there. So I think uh, I really love the community and like, and, uh, I want to be, be part of the community going over they can be the same helpful as people uh, who have been to me as well. Great, thank you. Um, so Andres, we know that CAP students are also part of the largest, larger Harris community. Someone in the chat just said like, do CAP and MPP students ever interact? Um, could you talk a bit about, you know, perhaps um, Harris student organizations you're involved in or other Harris, larger Harris activities you participate in? Yeah, <clears throat> I think as of now, like my main involvement has been with the policy review and I just joined kind of this more like a student wide organization called uh, Tech Team. Uh, and they basically the organization, there's a couple of people, there's another person from the CAP program, but there's also people from uh, the University of Chicago as a whole and it's doing like uh, civic tech projects around the area and we just had a meeting this past Sunday about doing there's this organization that they're doing like a love fridge um, and they're putting fridges around the city with food and they're trying to find out how to quantify <clears throat> the food that goes in and the food that goes out. And I think this is really cool because I'm working with like a lot of people from undergrad, but also like master's students, like another person from the CAP. So that's one of the ones that I'm involved in. And there's one that uh, Latin American matters that's within Harris as a whole, which I think uh, it's like a nice way that there's also like like regional specific organizations and that one's just like 
a way of me meeting people from Latin America and like they have like events and stuff like that related to like policy in Latin America. So I think that's really cool to also kind of bridge that with uh, interests. Great, thanks Andres. Um, Jacob, how about you? What are some ways that you've been involved in the larger Harris community? Yeah, um, I do a lot. I, I think it's pretty, they have a ton of stuff to do, right? So I think I started out with uh, UC3P, which is the podcasting organization. Uh, currently, right now, we're actually developing a tech policy podcast that we're launching with MPPs and MSCAP students. Uh, last year, I participated in the uh, Harris Community Action, which was sort of a 10-week fellowship with nonprofit organizations that I worked with MPPs. Um, and that was essentially we solve a data problem for them. Uh, I participate in Scopathon, uh, which is a, a two day event that's held yearly that connects students with local nonprofit organizations to scope out a data problem for them and give them sort of a way forward on what to do next, uh, which is a, a lot of fun. Um, and that's both MPP and MSCAP students. Um, and then it's, I think, just the daily. I mean, almost daily talks, you know, that were always happening, uh, that you could always have a chance to mingle with MPP students and frequently were led by MPP students uh, were a great way to get involved and hear from your classmates. Great. Um, we had a question come in about the mentor program. So I know that MSCAP students are eligible to participate in the mentor program and it looks a little different from year one to year two. Um, are any of you participating in the mentor program, either any of the programs last year or any of the matches this year? Yep, uh, I am a match for this year for one to one mentor program. My mentor is a data scientist at Walgreens. Um, and yeah, I think I had a few calls with her in the like last month or so. Um, if it's a really good program that like, and where they like, can do a one-to-one -one match with like, and so they have a huge list of mentors there and like, and you rank them and like, you, give, you give your preference as per like, and whatever work you want to do, what type of uh, uh, sector or area uh, you want to be. So I think the first uh, shout out is to the matching seems really good. They can like, uh, really uh, careful about your choices, your preferences there and the, they give you a really good match. And I think I'm just now trying to explore the mentor program from now on there. And I think uh, that's really helpful to like and have a true talk to someone one to one and like and have a uh, all your uh, thoughts or all your doubts. You can uh, you can get some input from from the person who is working in the real uh, world setting there. So yeah, so I think I haven't have experienced much. Okay, it just started for me, but uh, for the magic part. I, I'm really happy with the, the way Harris has matched the one-to-one -one mentors for the second years. Great, thanks, Piyush. Um, Jacob, were you nodding your head about that too? Yeah, I'm participating in it too. Um, I, yeah, I got similarly, I got matched to a great person. Uh, he worked in government technology contracting. He worked in the Obama White House, currently uh, founded a venture capital firm. Um, it's it's really nice to be able to look somebody up and see that you're you know one connection away from them, and I can just email them and be like, hey, can you introduce me to this person? And a couple of days later, I'll be introduced to that person and can have a conversation with them. So just that connection makes it so much easier to get people to talk to you uh, who would never talk to you. Um, maybe it's just me that they didn't want to talk to, but I don't know. That's great. Um... So moving on now more to the application and decision part part of this process. So Piyush, could you talk a bit about why you chose the University of Chicago and the MSCAP program in particular? Um, so um, my priority is like the first thing I wanted to get back to the classroom and I can um, study a bit more. So that was my first priority and the, I just love the I must get program. I think somehow I found the program very really randomly online by searching things there. And the way it was just mentioned there, the uh, how it's structured, the courses they offer there. So I just, I just like absolutely love the program from that point. And like, and from that point, it became my first choice to application there. Like very simply, like, like in the love at first sight, I would say. <laughs> That's great. Um, somebody wrote in the chat, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of them are thinking about the MPP or the MSCAP and, and you may have been considering between those two. Um, what, what sort of tipped the scales for the MSCAP program for you, Piyush? So for me, the, I think uh, one particular aspect was uh, while I was applying there was a STEM degree, like for 
interest students there i think that can that really matters for like and to work out your finances and everything at the, at the same time so at the time mpp was not a stem degree but now it is uh, if you take a bunch of courses in uh, in mpp as well so my one of the reason was the the stem aspect of the of amscap second was also the type of courses they offer and i think one other part which i really like about amscap uh, was it is a degree which is uh, offered by two departments there two different departments there so i could uh, really get the perspective of two departments at the same time the same day to there like and so that was the these two aspects really really favored it or double semester cap then the then the programs and then mpp that's right that's great and um just to clarify so the mpp program itself is not stem but the data analytics certificate is so um mpp yeah. students can do that data analytics certificate which has the stem designation um which can be a really nice option for students who don't want to do the full ms cap but would prefer to have the flexibility of the mpp um Jacob, why did you choose U Chicago in the MS CAP program? Yeah, um, I only applied to U Chicago and to University of Michigan. Uh, I'm from Michigan. I didn't want to go too far, I think. Um, but I wanted the computer science, and I didn't think I could learn it if it was just computer science. Like I, I'm not good at math really, and so the connection to public policy, like integrating it within that context was uh, essential for me. And this was, I mean, this is a pretty unique program. Uh, and so uh, at U of M, I would have had to do two master's degrees over three years to sort of get the same meld of skills that I would have gotten from here. And I would have been done way sooner. Um, I think also just, I mean, being in Chicago was really attractive. Um, and then just the caliber of people that I had met who went to the program and went to the school. Um, yeah, that just sort of sealed the deal for me. Um, I know applying to grad school is hard. There's lots of questions. Like, it's, it's a complicated process. Liz, what advice do you have? You know, how did you approach your applications and what advice do you have for people who are, who are going through the process right now? Yeah, I think in sort of classic U Chicago tradition, I have like one theoretical piece of advice and one more practical piece of advice. Um, and so the more theoretical one is just like sometimes it's important to step back and remember why you want to go to grad school because like that's really like why you want to go to the program is what's going to shine through in your essay. And so for me, I would always ask myself that question and then I would ask myself that question as though someone was like, wait, why do you want to go to grad school? And I was answering it then like my surprised answer was usually my more truthful one. And so I found that like sometimes it was helpful for me to just be like, just why do you want to do this? And then that answer was like the real one. Um, and that's also what's going to keep you going through grad school. Once you're in grad school and things get harder, like if you have that like why and you figure that out, that's that helps you in multiple directions, not just applications. Um, and the practical tip is more like start early on essays. Like first drafts are awful. Like for me, it was really helpful to just do like a word vomit version that was just like everything I could think of and I would like converge on the actual essay somewhere in the middle and then the revisions were where I actually got an essay that made sense rather than just me going oh no this makes me think of undergrad again um so like like start early give yourself some time to revise and think about it so you're not just like freaking out three days before like oh no I need to examine my deep motivations about grad school um, like, give yourself some time for that. <laughs> That's great, Liz. Thank you. Um, Andres, what ad application advice do you have? Mm, yeah, I think for me, I, I, I think the essays were like a huge piece for sure. I think when I was applying to grad school, one of the things that I was examining is like, why am I applying to that particular grad school? And like, why do I want to be in that city? Why do I want to be in that program? What are the courses? What are the, like, what's the motivation behind the program? And like, what type of kind of people, what do they go and do after? So like, I feel like if you have a clear answer of that for yourself and you just transmit it in the essay and you speak like kind of your own truth onto like why you want to approach that, I think you'll, do really well I think that's like I think from from that point of view is 
is figuring out first for yourself, is this like the right program for me? Like, am I, do I want to like do this type of jobs after I graduate? Do I want to develop this set of skills? If the answer is yes, kind of show how is it connected to what you're doing? Like, why do you, maybe you don't have the set of skills right now, but you're really interested in it. Like that also tells a lot. I think you don't need to like come with all the answers, but I found that kind of even if you're just interested in civic tech, but you don't know how to code yet, but you've seen really cool projects and you're wondering how will you be able to work on them? I think that's enough motivation to say, I think this degree can take me from point A to point B and to be able to be a contributor. So I think if if you have that answer for yourself, I think you'll do really well. Um, it's a lot of self-examination, like we said, I think that's like 80% of the work. Great. Thank you. We have a good question um, that Claire asked at the very beginning here, and I've been trying to think of the best, best place to put it. So I'll use it to kick off our, our um, Q&A um, from the audience. Um, and it's about the leadership development programming at Harris. Did any of you do any of the leadership development classes like with John Burroughs or any of the other leadership um, kind of co-curricular programming that Harris offers? Yeah, I did. I did. So I took him a part of the leadership studio through Harris um, with Will Gossin, uh, who I think he's a professor like through Booth and SSA maybe. Um, I was taking part of the in the social new venture challenge through Booth, which is a startup competition for students. Um, and essentially just do I was leading the team and he would do one on one uh, meetings with me to tell me all about what I was doing wrong. Um, because there are differently things when you're leading a team that you struggle with. Uh, and in, in especially around communication. And so he would take, you know, an hour or two with me a week and talk to me and bring prepared slides or materials or readings to say how you can improve what you're doing. Uh, they had group discussions too, which we all talked about the, the aspects or teams that we were leading and shared advice. Uh, so I, I thought that was really valuable. Um, it was a lot of fun. Question just came in here, um, comparing Harris to, you know, some of the other similar programs around the country. As you were thinking about other programs, applying to them, I know, um, you know, this question is specifically asking about Carnegie Mellon's program. I know Georgetown is another one students will look at. Um, what did you feel like set Harris's program apart, you know, as part of your decision to come to Harris? Um. So I'm just trying to speak. I, I applied to those two as well, and I, I got into all three. And I think for me, the decision was around the type of a program that like I was applying to. I think they're, even though they have the same kind of type of lessons, I think they all come from, they all come to, they all have the same end point in mind, which is like bring more people to civic tech and like equip them with the skills. But I think it's also like each, program has its own quirks and his own personality per se. So I think it's also a matter of where do you want to be? Like, do you want to be in Chicago? Do you want to be in Pittsburgh? Do you want to be in DC? They all have like different angles in which they approach kind of that. And I think that was important for me. Uh, and then I, I believe that at least for the CAP program, it made me choose that one also because it was one of the first ones that started kind of this computer science and kind of public policy combination. And a lot of those programs kind of are also like kind of growing, but I found like, at least I found like some solace on that U Chicago, at least from an international perspective, had that more renown. And I feel that as an international student, I felt like kind of a better choice to get at least that name stamp into the degree and on top of all the knowledge that I will acquire. Because I think if you decide to work in Europe or India or uh, London, I think it I'm assuming it carries better weight. At least that was my experience coming from South America. Great. Thanks, Andre. Um, oh, yeah, go ahead, Liz. Kind of comically, I have a connection to like all three schools now. So my little sister actually went to Carnegie Mellon as an undergrad and my husband went to Georgetown. Um, so like Carnegie Mellon, I'd also talked to an alum of that program. And so to me, it's also interesting, like how those different programs are also situated departmentally. Um, so like, for me, it was really important that U Chicago's program was administered between Harris and computer science, because I knew I wanted to do things in the computer science department. And I didn't want to have to like fight departmental politics to be able to do that. 
because I had to do that a lot when I did my undergrad degree across two different parts of the same school. Um, so that was really important to me. I think CMU has like a different angle a little bit in terms of being housed in the same area as like a more like information science and administrative side as opposed to like the computer science department, which is kept sort of aside because CMU does have such a intense computer science rep. That's a little harder to make that traversal sometimes. Um, and I think like Georgetown has like the DC vibe. And so to me, I wanted it, I had been in DC for a while. And so I was like, I want to do something that's not federal for a little bit. Um, and that also led me here. So I think they all have like different, different pros and cons, depending on what you're looking for. Great. Thanks, Liz. Um, most of the other questions that are coming up are about the, like some specifics of the application. So I'm going to share my screen and talk through kind of next steps for the application. So our next deadline is October 27th. So that's our early action deadline. Um, important to note that early action is not binding in this case. Um, you know, you, you have up until April 15th to make your decision. The advantage is that you know sooner, um, but you don't need to make any decision sooner. And then December 1st and January 22nd are our next deadlines. Um, the application, you know, we got a lot of questions about like what makes for a good applicant to Harris. Right now we're test optional. What does that mean? What sorts of things are you looking for in terms of work experience? Um, Katie, I'm going to throw the experience question over to you. Could you talk a bit when the committee is reviewing these applications, what sort of experience they're looking for someone to have had to be successful in the program? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think the biggest thing is, you know, we're a computer science program, but we're also a policy program. And so, you know, we want people who, you know, what I started off this conversation with is want to take these skills and go work in the public sector or at that nonprofit and food bank and foundation. And so I think we want to see, if not in your exact work experience, in your volunteer experience, in the types of organizations that you get involved with, um, that you kind of have a passion for a policy area. You don't have to, you know, know exactly what you want to do after, but we want to see that kind of spark of someone who wants to make an impact and wants to give back. Um, and then kind of on years of work experience, there's a huge range in the program. Um, so we have people that are right out of undergrad. And then we have people who have had sort of like full 10 year, you know, careers before they come in as a lawyer or a teacher or um, kind of anything in between. Um, and so there's really kind of no one right answer for work experience. Katie, I'm, I was seeing some questions in the chat that I think were coming from perhaps um, people on the earlier end of work experience. So for someone who doesn't have, you know, much work experience yet or is a current senior in college, what would be the types of things, you know, types of experience that would set a student apart to be admitted to the MSCAP program in that circumstance? Yeah, so in that case, we're looking at internships. So how did you choose to spend your summers? Um, and what projects can you speak to during those internships about kind of the skills that you gained, the leadership experience that you were able um, to kind of glean from those experience. We do spend a lot of time looking through resumes um, as part of the application review process. So um, I know one thing Alyssa always says is use your resume and kind of work experience, even if it's internships or student organizations or whatever it is, volunteering a few hours a week somewhere to kind of tell us your story and, and about kind of what you've been working on and what you care about. Great, thanks Katie. Um, we got a question too about, you know, are there specific things that the CAP committee is looking for when they're reviewing letters of recommendation? Alyssa, I know that you have done this, you know, across programs at Harris. Is there anything special or unique that um, the CAP committee looks for when they're, lo when they're reading a letter of recommendation? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think that this you know, we see letters from all types of different recommenders, whether it's professors that you may have had, um, you know, employers or supervisors or people in that capacity, people you volunteered with. Um, and I think one of the things that stands out to me most in reading letters is we can really tell when the recommender really knows the student well and can really speak in depth to the work they've done, their commitments, their goals, and really why 
that student wants to pursue a program like this. The, the thing that I really love to see when I'm reading letters of recommendation is, you know, when a recommender says something like, I've spoken with this student about why this program is a fit and what they want to do, and I can confirm that this aligns and they'll be really great in the program. So that kind of specificity and kind of clear connection and knowing you really well is something that really stands out in those letters. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Um, a question came in about the, a joint program with the MBA. So if you're interested in doing a joint program at Harris, um, the MPP is the way to do that. So um, it's the MPP MBA, MPP JD, MPP MA for the School of Social Service Administration. And the reason for that is you saw that the core for MSCAP is it's strenuous. There's less electives open to students. You're already kind of doing a joint degree with computer science and public policy. Um, so if you're interested in sort of adding on a joint degree, I would encourage you to look at the MPP because it gives you a lot more flexibility and versatility to do that. Um, and you could still do that certificate in data analytics. So that could be a nice way to like piece together those interests of yours. Um, so I think we are about, about at our time here. I want to really extend um, a big thanks to our student panelists. Maybe we could give them a virtual round of applause here. Thank you so much. Um, I know it is late. You have had long days of class and just really appreciate you taking your time to share your experiences with our prospective students and our applicants as they are engaging on this journey. And for all of our applicants who joined us, really wanna thank you. I know my team has really enjoyed getting to know you so far in this process. We are so excited for October 27th to get here and get to start reading your applications. Um, so best of luck as you're working through the process. Use the blog and use the FAQ. Like we've put a lot of time and effort into those to make them as useful for you as possible. Um, and we are hosting a lot of events like this. So keep an eye out for more of them. Um, so thank you all so much. Have a wonderful evening if you're in the U.S., day if you're around the world, um, and we look forward to seeing you at another event soon.